uh, ask questions. This is essential. There is no bad question. The more questions, ask at least 10, 15 questions. The more questions, the better. For instance, I'm going to give an example. Peter sees the paralyzed guy at the door, the entrance in the temple. Ask questions. Didn't the other see him? I mean, there were thousands of people entering the temple in Jerusalem every day, in and out, in and out, from morning to night, every day. Didn't the others see him? Yes, they did, because the Bible says they would give him a penny, a, a, a diner, a, a dinner, or whatever is the name. They would give him one dollar, let's say. Well, why didn't the others say in Jesus' name, take your bed and walk? Weren't they Christians? Weren't they God's people? If they enter the temple to worship God, can it be that we go to the church to worship God? We are good Christians. We keep Sabbath. We go to church. We worship God. Yet, we have a form of religion denying its power. We have no power, no presence. We are dead. Dead Christians worshiping. Because they entered the church, but they were as paralyzed in the church as he was paralyzed outside the church. Why only Peter? Why only Peter said in Jesus' name what? Why didn't the others? You ask questions. Why? Then did Peter pray before? Lord, if it's your will to heal this man, I pray that you he might believe. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Didn't Peter pray? The Bible, my Bible doesn't say that Peter prayed. Shouldn't you pray before you take an action? Why didn't Peter ask questions? Why didn't Peter pray? Well, the Bible says, it says that Peter was in the spirit. That means that Pit Peter didn't pray in crisis as we do. We pray routine prayer and crisis prayer. What is routine prayer? Routine prayer is when you pray in the morning and evening and before the meals. And crisis prayer when you lost your job or you had a car accident. Or, uh, th those are the prayers that we usually pray. But the Bible says pray without ceasing. You should not pray because you have a need or because it's a right thing to do routine. But you should pray continually to be continually dependent. That means to walk with God. Enoch, Abraham, Peter, they walked with God. Elena I talking about Enoch says in the Sarah of Ages, he walked with God, comma. He was continually in God's presence, depending on God. To, to, to pray without ceasing doesn't mean to keep asking without ceasing or to be in crisis without ceasing. It means to be continually connected to the point that you depend. What Jesus says in John, I don't do my own works. I do the works of the Father because Jesus was continually connected to the Father. Peter didn't need to pray in crisis because he was praying all the time. So thus, the answer comes. People who pray in crisis is because they don't pray all the time. If you pray all the time, you don't despair in Christ. You have a peace because you know you are in God's hands. Peter didn't have to pray for that incident because he was already praying continually without ceasing. And the Holy Spirit, he says Peter was in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit told him, say this or do that. Like Jesus. Jesus says, I don't do my own acts. I do what the Father says. Peter didn't do what his mind came. Oh, what about if I do this? He was continually depending on God. So you ask questions. Why didn't Peter pray? Because he was praying or he was connected, better to say. Or you ask a different question. Why didn't Peter give him money? Well, because he didn't have. I, I doubt that. Well, but Peter says, Pastor, money I don't have. No good Jew, no good Israelite, not one would go to the temple without paying tithe and giving offerings. All of them faithful, and Peter was faithful. That means that Peter had tithe. Now, tithe is holy. It belongs to God. But from the offerings, he could have given that man a penny. It would have been absolutely appropriate. From the money that you give for offerings, one this time, to give a little to a paralyzed man. Why didn't Peter give? Can it be that Peter says, okay, in his mind thinking, in his mind process, everybody for 40 years gives you money every day yet you are still here. Do that money really help you? Or actually enable you to stay paralyzed? Do that money make a difference in your life? Or leave you where you have been yesterday, still today and still tomorrow? Hey, I have some money, not a lot. I am poor. I have only the money for offering that I could give you for. But that money doesn't really help you. What helps you is Jesus. That's what you need. So Peter says, hey, the money that I have, are not really going to make a difference in your life. But what I give you, that's what you really need. It's not money. Therefore, what is our real need? Another question that you ask. The need that we think about or the need that God thinks about? Because we pray for this need and God says, nope, that's not your problem, actually. 
the problem that you think you have is not your problem. He thought his problem is that he needs some money. Peter says, no, your problem is that you are paralyzed. So Peter says, hey, this is what I give you. I give you in Jesus, in Jesus. What he says, what I have, I give you. What did he give you? Healing, Peter didn't have healing, he had Jesus. He says, in Jesus' name, what? Peter gave him the hope of Jesus. What would be the benefit to give him healing if he doesn't have Jesus? And so you ask questions. Why didn't Peter give him money? Uh, and why didn't the others heal him? Were they really connected to Jesus? Did they have Jesus? Because if you, you cannot give what you don't have. If they didn't give Jesus, it means they didn't have Jesus. They didn't even focus on Jesus. So you ask questions. Talking about Jonah and the building of the ark. We say, oh, I've been praying for three months, God doesn't answer. Really? Answer to prayer in Bible, it's a process, it's not an event. It took Abraham 25 years to get a son. It took uh, Anna several years to get pregnant. It took Joseph 10 years to be a slave and another seven years more or less in prison, 17 years more or less to get an uh, to get answer to, to his dreams and his prayers. It took, uh, we, can, we could go Moses 40 years in the wilderness until God fulfilled the promise. It took uh, Jonas 120 years until he saw the flood. Now, that takes a lot of patience and a lot of faith. And then you ask the question, do we really have faith? We think we do. Faith is when we wait upon the Lord. Those who wait, we pray and we have no patience. And the patience of the saints means to wait. Noah was willing to wait. You ask questions, what did his family, what did his church, what did his neighbor say? He lost his mind. You need to go to the psychology. You need to check yourself, buddy. Do you care about what the others say? Do you try to please them or to obey God? You ask questions. We talk about Joshua. Why did Joshua go to prayer? Because he was praying when the captain of the army of God came and talked to him. Why did he go to prayer? Well, you find it in Patriarchs and Prophets. It says that he knew that he is inadequate, that he is weak, that the responsibility is greater than he could carry. And because he felt his total dependence, he went to prayer, she says. You ask questions. The more questions you ask, the deeper you go into the background and you understand the details of the story. So it's extremely crucial to ask questions. The more questions, the better. Now, this is very important in preparation. The more questions you ask, the more ideas you get. 